you all clear of Taylor. I'll uh, fix up the inbound. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, I'll clear Taylor. Major pickup. Uh, it's about the short six from earlier there. Thank you. Have a good day. Roger. Happy New Year. Thank you. Unlike when I was younger, nowadays I can actually take time out to appreciate the holidays of the year and to celebrate them for all of their work. But one business that never stops operating no matter what the day is, is transportation. Products and goods have to move seamlessly 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Such was the day, New Year's Eve, when I got the word that the Reading and Northern Pittston, Pennsylvania yard job, better known to us locals as the YJPI, was working Taylor Yard. The plan was to drop off a handful of cars and to pick up 20. After the inbounds had been dropped, they had to make a run up their Kaiser Valley track to pick up empties from the Kane Warehouse. That's where I caught them from my car at the Luzerne Street grade crossing. Kane Warehouse is one of the RNN's biggest customers in the area. It receives almost daily deliveries of wine and liquor from the West Coast. It's one of the few customers in northeastern Pennsylvania that exclusively receives freight cars from the Western Railroads as well as cryogenic and insulated boxcars. Once the empties were pulled out of Kane, the next stop for today's crew was to the Scranton runaround track where the locomotives uncoupled from the empties, ran around them, and pulled back south to Taylor Yard. A belated Christmas present for me was the eclectic power combination on today's train. Seeing three locomotives on a yard job is rare enough, but having three locomotives so uniquely different from one another is another rarity in and of itself. The 2004 is an EMD SD38 of Penn Central Heritage, while the now rebuilt EMD GP39RN is an ex Santa Fe GP30R. The end cab switcher is an ex-Lehigh Valley EMD SW8. Once the runaround move was made, it was down the line to Taylor Yard, now with the SD38 leading. A shot that I've been wanting to get for some time now was at the entrance of the Kaiser Valley Industrial Park. Getting this shot successfully can only be accomplished during the months of the barren winter when the trees are free of the thick, hard to see through foliage of spring, summer, and fall.
At Taylor Yard, I watched the oddball threesome from the comfort of my car, paying attention to the notion that each locomotive is wearing a unique RNN paint scheme. The two end pieces are sporting an original version of the Reading and Northern livery, while the middle Jeep is wearing the original Philadelphia and Reading paint scheme. The yard crew reverses to pick up the 20 inbound loaded boxes. This train will be tail heavy moving back to Pittston as the empty cars are all up front with the heavily laden ones on the tail.
horn blast signals that this train is ready to roll. As is the norm with the inbound freight for the RNN at Taylor, today's breakfast consists of the common Canadian Pacific and Canadian National boxes. I don't know for sure, but I believe that these box cars are loaded with scrap paper and go to the new Translo facility in Ransom. As is in the train symbol, YJPI, this train's return destination is the former Lehigh Valley's Coxton Yard, today Reading and Northern's Pittston Yard. Pittston Yard has seen a massive resurgence in recent years. Coxton Yard was the Wyoming Valley hub for the Lehigh Valley Railroad. The Delaware, Lackawanna and Western's Bloomsburg Line, part of which is today's Reading and Northern Scranton branch, ran along the south end of the Y leading into Coxton Yard but was never a part of the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western. The Bloomsburg branch and the Lehigh Valley's main line crossed each other at a diamond in Pittston. The Lehigh Valley's main line from Wilkesbury and the mountain cutoff met at the south end of Coxton Yard. Coxton Yard started being called Pittston Yard when it was taken over by Conrail. It's now called either Coxton, Durier and sometimes even Muller Yard since it has been taken over by the Reading and Northern in the mid-1990s. By the time I got there, GP38-2 number 2011 was occupying the Scranton branch and was in the process of being moved to the newly constructed side tracks. Only a few minutes after the jeep cleared the branch, the YJPI rumbled into Pittston Yard with its long manifest, shaking the camera mount as it rolled by. It swept around the curve, past the working wigwags, and into the yard to finish today's work.
Before the warning bells of the grade crossing could even stop dinging, the 2011 was repositioning itself back at its original perch on the Scranton branch entrance of the yard, which concluded this day of unexpected New Year's Eve rail fanning.